What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from the customer. This story's called, Lazy Kevin, the cab driver, makes me late for work. AGAIN! Company owner rips him a new one. This happened when I was still pretty new at my retail job. The job was only a couple of miles away, so the commute was maybe 10 minutes with good traffic. I didn't have a car and relied on a local cab company to get me there. This was before I learned about Uber. Even if I did, the cell phone I had at the time was an old model and wasn't compatible with the app anyway. Every day I worked, I requested a ride roughly an hour before my shift began to have some wiggle room for any hiccups that might occur like traffic, flat tire, what have you. Most times they would arrive in about a half an hour later and I'd have a good time cushion for work. One of the two company owners, I'll call him Benny, fake name, drove a taxi cab as often as his employees. I became a regular and often had him as my driver. He was a very sweet and kind man. Funny too. The classic heavy set teddy bear type you just adore. We often talk talked about food and shared recipe tips on the drive. I'm not sure how many employees Benny had, but he had this one in particular who was the polar opposite of him. Opposite of kind and reliable. I'll call him Kevin. Again, fake name. Because, you know. Whenever I called for a ride to work and Kevin took the job, the guy was always late. Plenty of times led to me being late to work or arriving just in the nick of time. My managers on duty were loosely understanding of my transportation issues yet never missed a beat to reprimand me for it. I hate being late for work and felt awful for the entire day I was late. Even if it wasn't my fault for being late, I still felt guilty for letting my team down when I try to be a dependable person. Kevin never gave a reason why he was late, nor ever apologized to me. You could smell the, I don't give a flying turd, aura that radiated off of him. It felt like catching a whiff of spoiled food whenever you opened a refrigerator. Once, Kevin didn't even show up. No excuse or anything. Thing. I called Benny about it and he sent the closest driver in the area to pick me up. I gave the driver a cash tip for coming to my rescue and just barely made it to work on time. Every time I wound up late to work because of Kevin's unreliability, I called Benny directly to complain as he said to report any issues I had with the service to him since I was a regular customer. He apologized for the trouble and oftentimes offered to pick me up personally the next time to ensure I got to work on time. He told me Kevin was the suspended without pay for the complaints against him. Apparently, I wasn't the only victim. After that, Benny offered to be my driver and even comped a ride or two for me. I thanked him with extra cash tips when I could, as well as homemade baked goods. He and his kids love my snickerdoodles. Sweet, chewy, cinnamony goodness. <laughs> So one morning, I called the cab company for a ride to work a little over an hour before my shift starts. 30 minutes pass, nothing. 40 minutes pass, nothing. I called my job to say what was going on, and my manager was not happy but understood. Told me to get there safely. Thank God two of them were there to open the store or I'd have been in worse trouble. Then I called the company asking where Kevin was, and the phone operator, a very helpful lady, was surprised he wasn't there yet because he was nearby. She called called me back and came to find out that Kevin, and all his glory, forgot that he took the fare to pick me up. The lady I spoke to said he was finally on his way. My previous freaking out turned into a full-on anxiety attack. I fell to my knees and just cried and hyperventilated, ruining my makeup in the process, but I didn't care. It had been two years since I had one. Fifteen minutes later, Kevin picks me up and surprise, surprise, no apology or or anything. I couldn't believe this excuse of an employee, or a human being for that matter, felt no semblance of guilt for being a lousy employee, much less a human being. I made no effort to hide how distraught I was in the cab. For all I knew, it was my last day of work before my boss fired me for being late too many times. While in the car, Kevin called Benny. I found out to confirm to Benny that he picked me up, and I could hear the conversation. Benny berated the shiz out of Kevin. There wasn't a drop of humility in Kevin's voice when he spoke. He even had the audacity to get outraged at Benny for telling him my ride would be free. Here's the cliff notes of their conversation. Don't charge OP. Her ride is free today. Free? Why? Because you know damn well why. A customer, a regular one at that, is late for work because of you. No one else who picked her up ever made her late. Just you. If she lost her job because of your carelessness, I'll drive 
I've heard in the court here in myself. I was 20 minutes late for work that day. My boss showed me mercy when she realized I'd been crying. I told her everything and she gave me a hug. She let me clean myself up in the bathroom after I clocked in. The next two days, I wasn't scheduled to work and relaxed at home. Benny called me to say he fired Kevin after he dropped me off. He had two strikes before then and him forgetting to pick me up was the third and final straw. Benny said I could call him personally anytime if I needed a ride to work and he would make it work for his schedule to help me. What a guy. Benny took care of his family, his business, and his customers. We sadly lost touch, but I appreciated him looking out for me. Not just as a beloved customer, but almost like a father looks out for a daughter. Benny, you're a true bro. Ah, it's getting me choked up. That's so sweet. I'm a big fan of like surrogate parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, not like the medical term for surrogate where you put your baby in someone else or whatever, but like when someone kind of takes up a role of a parental figure um, in someone's life. And that's really cool to me. I, I admire it. So this story was so sweet. You should definitely get in touch with Benny again. Cool dude, man. This story's called, I Detest My Mail Service. When I first moved, I wasn't getting any of my mail. All I did was move down the hall in my apartment building. So it was odd that none of my mail was successfully being forwarded. After a lot of investigation on my end of making a claim and going nowhere, I decided I needed to wait for the mail carrier to actually be at the mailboxes. This is where I discovered that the building manager never removed a paper blocking my box saying my unit was vacant. Shame on my terrible manager, but that's a different post. At the same time, for two weeks, no one in the mail service mentioned this vacant note. It was obvious my claim wasn't communicated to anyone. I had to figure all of this out to ensure my mail arrived. Cool. This year, I tried to send my mother a Mother's Day card with a gift card inside. It never arrived. It was pretty disappointing, and I ended up sending her a lame e-card with another gift card. Now I'm down a hundred bucks. Thank Thanks, mail service. My mom's birthday comes up a month later, and I send her a birthday card with a $50 gift card. It never shows up. Before, I thought it was just a mistake. Now I'm convinced I'm being robbed. I file a claim for this one, and am told I should always use certified mail in order to ensure my mail gets delivered. What? Okay. So I send another birthday card with $50 with priority mail. It's already past my mother's birthday, and every phone conversation has made me feel like a douche because my gifts never arrive. Priority mail takes 10 freaking days because they delivered it to the wrong zip code and it got stuck in limbo. Thanks mail service. Now I'm down $150. I filed two claims for the priority mail I paid for and never got a response. Am I done? No. Recently my mail has been all over the place. What do I mean? Well the mail carrier is now the main issue. It was obvious that the person on the route had changed because whenever they felt like appearing to deliver the mail, they no longer had a key to the building. So this mail person just shouts, MAIL, outside the building. I live right by the entrance, so I reluctantly went downstairs to let him in. But he wasn't there anymore. He started walking down the street. I said, HEY, and waved him back, and he just gestures like he's saying, I'll come back. Cool, I'll just wait then. He delivers the mail to two houses, then comes back to the building. I didn't confront him this time. I just let him in and hope this was a one-time thing and the regular carrier would be back with a key. Next day, I'm sitting in the apartment and I hear, MAIL! I refuse to move. It's not my responsibility to open the door for them. They have a key! I leave to get food like 30 minutes later and all the mail is on the ground outside the building but inside the fence. He threw it over the fence. Now I have to file a claim, so I do just that. Next day, same thing. MAIL! Now I'm sprinting to let him in. I want to talk to him. I let him in and I stand in front of him and ask, aren't you supposed to have a key? The first thing he does is pull out keys and asks, is it any of these keys? I didn't even know how to respond, so I just tell him that yesterday I found my mail in a pile of mail on the ground outside. He says, that wasn't me. I've been doing this for 20 years. So I say, I know it was you. I watched you do it. Lie. But he knows it was him, so he comes 
completely deflates. He starts apologizing, and it's hard to concentrate on the meaningless words as I walk away. He proceeds to go to the mailboxes and continues to apologize as I walk up the staircase. I already filed a claim, so who knows what'll happen. I got a response from the claim. Even though I was completely thorough in explaining what happened before the confrontation, the response seems to be copy and pasted as it mentions how my package never got delivered. Never mentioned a package ever. So, okay. So today, all the mail was in a pile on top of the mailboxes and I didn't even get my mail yesterday. I use a feature where I get scans of what I'm receiving and yeah, didn't get the important mail from yesterday. Don't even know what to do other than to move to another zip code. Edit, my building hasn't had any mail delivered since I filed a complaint regarding the carrier. Okay, that's actually infuriating. They said you have to get certified mail to ensure it gets delivered, then why are you freaking doing regular mail? I'm assuming certified mail's like, you know, higher tier, right? I'm pretty sure, I don't ship things that much. But that's ridiculous. What is the point of selling a service if you're not gonna freaking do it right unless you have like a premium version? Ah, government, I hate you. All right, this story's called, it's my fault for reading the price tag correctly? This took place at a small regional version of a large national grocery store that I usually like visiting because it's smaller and the staff is a bit friendlier than the larger stores. I was in the dairy aisle and saw what looked like a good, but not implausibly good deal on a 12 pack of eggs for $1.99. The only price tag on the entire shelf for these eggs was $1.99. And the only carton of eggs on said shelf were 12 packs. When I went to check out, the egg carton wouldn't scan and so the cashier asked me how much the eggs were. I responded that the price tag said $1.99. The cashier stopped and stared directly at me. That's not right. Now, normally, cashiers at this place tend to be pretty trusting and have asked me for prices on things that didn't scan before and trusted my answers. But this cashier simply wasn't having it and insisted that eggs are never that cheap. She then called called on another employee to go check the price. I just stood there awkwardly for a couple of minutes while she continued to explain how impossible it was that these eggs could be $1.99, pointing to one of the various advertising phrases written on the box. You see, these are vegetarian eggs. I noted that the full phrase actually read part of a vegetarian diet and therefore not really that special. These were literally the most normal looking, not organic, not brown, just plain white eggs, eggs on the aisle. This quieted her and led to a silent couple of minutes as we waited for the other employee to return. The employee returns with a manager in tow as well and admits that the price said $1.99, but I think it's wrong. It was probably for a six pack of eggs. The cashier is now triumphant and breezily asks the manager how much she should charge me while the manager, hesitating a bit, says it would make no sense to charge twice as much then for a 12 pack. By this time, yet another employee has come over, there are now four, and glares at me before saying, is that good enough for you? During all this time, I never indicated that I was upset and or wouldn't pay $3.98 for the eggs, merely that this was, in fact, the price tag that I had seen. I said it was fine and really at that point just wanted to leave. The cashier finally finishes checking me out, but continues to repeatedly scoff at the audacity of my thinking that eggs could be $1.99 for a dozen. As a matter of fact, a dozen eggs are, indeed, that cheap at a different nearby grocery store. I think I'll get them there from now on. That is amazing customer service. That is so good. Your goal is to make your customers feel like idiots. All right, this story's called Taking Forever With My Order Is Fine, But Don't Lie About It. We recently drove to my favorite pizza place for curbside. Even though it's a 40 minute drive, we needed to get out of the house and I hadn't had it for months. We ordered at 4.35, were quoted a 5.10 pickup and showed up at 5.15. We called the store, they asked what kind of car we had and they said our food would be right out. At 5.35, I went into the restaurant and asked about our order. 
The guy said, We had a problem with our printer and we haven't made your food yet. I asked him why he didn't let us know that in the 20 minutes since we were sitting outside and he said, I just figured it out. Okay, fine. I took a seat and a woman came in with what she said was the wrong food. It turned out that they had given her our food by mistake. The problem was, he then tried to hand me the food that she had just carried back from her car during a pandemic. At this point, it was 5.55. My kid was sitting in the car with mom getting restless, so I just asked for my money back. The manager said, Are you sure you don't just want it? When I said no, he made a big show of dropping the food into the garbage. No sorry, no can we make it up to you, nothing. We drove 40 minutes back home without pizza. Times are tough. I want to support local businesses. Mistakes happen. But please be upfront with customers if something gets messed up. That's some sound logic. However, in the defense of the of people that lie to customers and stuff, a lot of time customers aren't very rational. And so a perfectly understandable mistake is blown up out of proportion. Um, So they try as hard as they can to deflect blame because again, unreasonable people. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.